Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. Sorry, my armor was distracting me a little bit then, this weird lighting glitch keeps happening. Anyway, welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. Today, we are going to be doing something very special and something that you're probably not going to want to do in every Minecraft survival world unless you are an achievement hunter or an advancement hunter, I guess, because today we are going to start working on the how did we get here advancement which you may remember is that advancement that requires you to have every single status effect applied at the same time notice that i'm saying status effect and not potion effect because the words in front of me are very specific potion effects are any effects that you can get from drinking a potion that you can brew as a player status effects are a little bit different status effects include things like haste which is not available as a potion you can only get it from a beacon status effects also include negative stuff like having mining fatigue from an elder guardian and status effects also include levitation from a shulker so as you will see from the title of this video we are going to be going to the end and getting ourselves a shulker today as part of the preparation for eventually getting that coveted how did we get here advancement for having all of the status effects at once and there's something a little bit unusual about this video and that's that i've already done it twice uh <laughs> a little bit of a, a mishap happened while i was recording the original episode of this and so i'm coming back here to do it again and this is actually good because we have a proof of concept for how this method actually works and i can explain it to you 100 percent correctly which let's just say i did not do the first time around when i recorded this so i i really realized that i had to come back and do this whole thing again however i can assure you that the two shulkers we are looking at over here were not spawned in using spawn eggs we have not use creative mode or summon commands we have got these shulkers to the overworld 100% legitimately using survival gameplay and I will show you how in this episode and you'll notice that they are around the zero zero point of the world they're actually basically at the center of the world not even at the spawn chunks part of the world because our spawn chunks as you'll remember are over there kind of beyond the beam of the end crystal over there in the farmland and that is where I thought the shulkers were originally going to spawn when I moved them from the end but no they actually spawn out here and that is something I'm going to have to remember a little bit later on because that is one of the mistakes I made in presenting this video the first time around. So we're going to have a do-over, we've got a mulligan on this episode and we are going to do this the right way this time around. So first of all, where are we going to get these shulkers from and how are we going to get them back to the overworld? Well the answer to both of those things is pretty straightforward. We're going to get them from the end and we're going to bring them back through the end return portal in much the same way that we the player return to the overworld. The only way you can get an entity, a mob, whatever it is from the end back to the overworld is by using this portal and that presents a bit of an interesting challenge when it comes to bringing a shulker to the overworld but I personally believe it's the most effective way of really doing the how did we get here advancement to begin with because you'll remember that that includes status effects like mining fatigue and dolphins grace both of which require transporting aquatic mobs to a specific location that's going to be much easier to do in the overworld where you can mess around with water and stuff like that than it is somehow transporting a dolphin and an elder guardian through a stronghold portal to the end and then getting them into close proximity with a shulker along with things like wither roses and all kinds of other stuff it really just just makes more sense to bring a shulker to the overworld to begin with and as you can see already done it twice so it's actually quite straightforward if a chap like me can do it to begin with now i've made some preparations around the end portal a little bit in particular i have blocked up the area down here that we were using to kill the wither if we dig down a few blocks into here you'll probably run across some obsidian that i was using as a platform to spawn the wither on there we go that is the wither cheese platform that we were using to basically suffocate the wither in bedrock and prevent it from attacking us when we wanted to get some extra nether starts now that i have blocked off in its entirety for reasons i will explain a little bit later on i have also made a very long minecart rail track that travels all the way from the outer islands of the end back to this central island and the reason for that i will explain in a few seconds as well but i do have to make one quick correction over here the uh, the shulker in the minecart which you will see a little bit later on was causing me a little bit of trouble so i did have to break a couple of pieces of track here just gonna have to make sure that all of this is in place and bear in mind that when you make tracks like this 
it is possible for Enderman to spawn out here, and you have to be very, very careful when they do. So there we go. This should now all be spawn-proofed against any Enderman appearing here, which is why I find minecart rails some of the easiest methods of transporting shulkers back from the outside islands to the central island, because the Endermen don't really come into play until you reach the central island again. So you, all of this will become clear in a second or two. But first, we have to travel all the way out to a location that you'll probably be fairly familiar with if you've watched any of my recent episodes. And that is here, Enderville, or the Ender Park, or the world's most dangerous collection of people in beds, <laughs> as I've decided it probably is at this point. Yes, we are back here, but we are not here to marvel at the fact that they are still producing iron golems, or the fact that these villagers haven't been seen for a while. What we are here for is this. This end city is probably the closest one I have found to the outer ring of islands, to, to the edge, and, and kind of closest, therefore, to the central island where we need to take some shulkers back. And the two shulkers that you've already seen me move to the overworld are the door guards from this end city. So we're going to have to go a little bit further up in order to get ourselves a couple of shulkers. But if you have seen my mob moving masterclass episode, you will know that in order to move a shulker, all you really need is a boat or a minecart, and we're actually going to be using both today. But now, we need to scout for the location of our first attempt at grabbing a shulker, and I think some of these outer platforms might be a good idea, or maybe we can get one from up here on the back of the boat. Let's go to the boat, actually. It's always kind of fun going up here, getting ourselves an elytra as well, and as you can see, there are a couple of shulkers up here already. I have not raided this end city at all, with the exception of taking the two shulkers who are guarding the door, and of course, we're immediately going to run into this guy who's going to give me levitation. That's not a problem. We need some blocks around him to place the boat on. I'm going to wait for the levitation effect to wear off here, make sure I can use my shield against any other... Oh, great, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a... a a second or two here while I block some of these incoming shulker bullets and hopefully we can swoop down place a boat on this block of endstone here and BAM we have ourselves a shulker in a boat now that wasn't too hard was it all right now hopefully as long as there is a nice easy spot for me to fall onto down there this shulker should not take any fall damage by us driving off the end here in a boat so I'm just gonna fall casually like so and there we go we stuck the landing not bad not bad at all so now we're over here by Enderville and I'm going to row around. Let me check. Okay, I'm at the roughly the right elevation, so we should just need to row around the outside of where I've built these houses, and we should be able to row straight onto the platform where I've built the minecart rail leading all the way back to the central island. Okay, so this is the start of our minecart rail, and you'll notice there aren't any powered rails in here. There's a reason for that, and it's actually kind of a neat one. I do have a shulker box here with a few minecarts and stuff spare, and a bunch of rails, and thanks to the iron farm, I've been able to make rails that go all the way back to the central island. That's about a thousand blocks in that direction, and then about 200 in that direction, because I realized that the central island is slightly offset from where we are on the x-axis there. It's about 300 blocks off, so I did have to do a little bit of rejigging there, but um, all we need to do really is have a slope that kind of pushes this minecart down into the boat. And as we've seen in previous episodes, the Mob Moving Masterclass episode in particular, Boats can actually end up in minecarts even if they have a passenger in already. It's kind of like a, a stacking situation. So if we push this minecart onto here, a weird thing will happen with the boat and minecart physics kind of meshing together. And the boat will start to propel itself without the need for any powered rails at all. So you don't need to waste your gold, waste your redstone, anything like that. All you need to do is push the minecart down into that and it's off and it will keep going. It's not slowing down. <laughs> so I'm just going to run behind this guy all the way back to the central end island, where we're going to make the second set of preparations to bring this shulker back to the overworld. And here he comes now. Now we could potentially run into a small problem once he reaches this section of the island, because he's probably going to pick up an enderman as another passenger for the boat. Yep, knew it. Okay, this presents a little bit of a problem because it forces the shulker into the forward position in the boat, and that means it takes a small amount of suffocation damage on each of the blocks that it has to go up, because it's actually being pushed forward into the block itself that this rail is resting on. So that's not the biggest deal in the world. 
it takes maybe like two or three points of damage nothing major we could always heal it up with a splash potion of healing and in order to get this enderman out of the back of the boat we're going to have to use a non-sweeping weapon like an axe for example unfortunately you can't use bows on enderman otherwise that's what i would be doing and yeah now this guy is going to have some weird physics so it's probably best if we take him out of the boat which will also take him out of the minecart and this is where we have to be a little bit careful and we might have to do a little bit of getting the shulker back into the uh the boat but hopefully he'll teleport to one of these blocks around here worst thing that can happen is he'll teleport up onto this tower and we have to do a little bit of pillaring up to get to him but now if we break the boat like so yep he's on the tower okay not to worry we should be able to just place a few blocks underneath him get him back in the boat and it's time to move on to phase two Okay, we got him nice and easily, and let's bring him down, making sure that we can bring him down onto the level where the end portal is at. Otherwise, you'll need to raise the uh, boat up with a piston, or just make sure that the minecart rail ends on roughly, what is it, Y61 is where the end portal will be generating, and that is where we need to leave our shulker friend for a minute, just harmlessly in the boat. And while he's in the boat, any shulker bullets that he fires should be directed downwards, so we don't have to worry about him levitating us while we do this next thing. Next up, you're going to want to spawn proof an area around the portal here. I've already covered the portal in torches, but for the purposes of demonstration here, I'm going to break out some of this redstone dust because you may remember redstone dust is something that mobs will not spawn on or in this case teleport to because the shulker is going to want to teleport when we take him out of the boat. The idea is to block his access to all of the blocks around here with the exception of a few that we want him to spawn over. So what we're going to do, because shulkers can teleport teleport basically anywhere within eight blocks of them in any direction it's a 17 by 17 cube basically that includes vertical transport so that's why we've had to block out the uh wither killing area down there but basically if we imagine this is the block he's on we want to go eight blocks in every direction so that's one two three four five six seven eight that way eight in the opposite direction as well so counting the portal blocks we've got one two three four five six seven eight that's the maximum out there and we just need to draw a big square around this area here using redstone dust to mark out the area where we can expect the shulker to want to teleport and block that off from his teleportation you don't have to use redstone dust for this if you don't have much of it you can use anything like slabs or stone buttons or wood buttons and anything that's going to stop an enderman or a shulker from teleporting to that specific location and if we look at this from above it's pretty cool looking and that's the only reason i've lit it up with redstone here it's not required for this at all i just wanted to show you guys the effective teleport area of a shulker if we release it on that block there specifically that block in front of the portal and you're not going to be able to line it up exactly so you might want to give yourself a little bit of extra leeway around the outside and place another row of redstone dust in every direction but that is the area in which a shulker can teleport remember it can teleport vertically as well so upwards and downwards are a concern especially if you've got stuff built in the end already but if you haven't like here that should be enough to stop the shulker from teleporting anywhere except a couple of very specific locations we want to have the shulker teleport to over the top of the portal frame and you can even fill in some more of these with carpet to stop them from being valid spawnable spaces until you just have one possible spawnable space remaining but we're not going to worry too much about that today because i will show you it can be done from anywhere you just might want a little bit of extra precision here and there so having taken away the redstone blocks because those are potentially blocks that the shulker could attach itself to we're going to row this guy out into the middle here and if you want to you can even row him directly into the portal itself this is something i kind of recommend doing actually after a couple of attempts because uh you can actually sit in the portal in a boat you can't take entities that are passengers on minecarts or boats through the portal like that and as you'll see if i stand on top of here i'm actually standing on top of the boat rather than going through the portal and the shulker is down in there as well still in the boat you'll see that's the oar of the boat sticking out there if i press f3 and b we can see the hitbox of the shulker unfortunately not the hitbox of the boat but that's fine we can sort of guess where the boat is and make an educated guess at that so what we're going to now do is break the boat forcing the shulker to teleport into a location that is not currently covered by redstone dust the only valid locations we have left considering that we have put torches all over this bedrock are these four spaces 
attached to the bedrock at the bottom here or on top of any of these portal blocks. Unfortunately, it won't attach to any of the blocks that it is currently like in because it will detect that the portal block here is still something that it cannot spawn inside. However, it will be able to spawn on top of those. Once it does that, we need to set up a piston, which for some reason I don't have with me. Did I leave that around here somewhere <laughs> or did I end up sending it back through the portal? I better go and get myself a piston real fast. I'm pretty certain the shulker should stay there, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I have made it back to the end. I have myself a piston and a lever. Very important that we have something to activate the piston with, although the redstone blocks would have done, I suppose. And now we still have a shulker in a boat in a portal. That is crucial. <laughs> Thankfully, he is still there. He's still cooperating. So what we're going to do is we're going to break the boat using an arrow fired from a bow and hopefully... The shulker should teleport to an area above the portal here. Worst case scenario, it teleports to a block above the redstone dust here. And we have to put him back in the boat and try again. But in testing this a couple of times, it's relatively consistent that he will teleport to a block above the portal. Like I said, if you want to narrow that down with carpets and stuff, you can. But if we do this... There we go. He's in a block above the portal. He's even attached to a piece of the bedrock frame. Now you will need to defend yourself a little bit against his attacks, but we can take out one torch there, one torch there, and we are going to place a piece of end stone up there. Now we should be able to place a piston facing downwards, and of course he's going to levitate me a little bit, so this is going to take a second or two. So I'm going to do my best to place a piston facing downwards on the block above him like so. Okay, it's facing sideways, of course. And that didn't go super well, but I should hopefully be able to block myself from his attacks and try and place a piston facing downwards on this block here. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely getting hit by lots of bullets if I get that close to him. Okay, the backup plan is to have him levitate me above this block so I can place a couple more blocks going up here and we'll push a block down into him using the piston instead of pushing the piston down through the shulker itself. Whoa, okay, yep. <laughs> and now I was briefly levitating in the overworld. Working around the end portal is difficult. I can see why people cover it in carpet now. So after that happened a couple more times, I decided my best bet was probably to come back out here with a few pistons and a bit of carpet and try and bridge over to the shulker. He's a little bit wily, he's still hitting me with those levitation bullets, but I think we should be able to sneak a piston in here if we can. The backup plan is actually to head up on top of here and push a piston using a block there we go yes no we've done it okay right we can take those blocks away i will do my best to spawn proof the outside of this as well just in case he ends up teleporting onto the block but the carpet does make it a little bit easier to go out over the nether portal and place that downwards facing piston if they end up in that position so i highly recommend doing that now all we should need to do is add a lever to the top of this let's see if i can end a pearl onto that or maybe just allow one of these bullets to hit me and levitate down onto the thing while the shulker can't see me yep there we go if i position myself above him i'm out of his line of sight so hopefully he shouldn't be able to see me don't forget you can block these bullets with a shield as well it should be a little bit more easy to do and now all we need to do is place this lever on there and if we flick it once bam the shulker gets pushed down into there and in the split second before it can teleport it gets pushed through into the overworld well that seemed like a bit of an ordeal and it is it's not an easy process especially if you're new to this but it's one of those things that with a little bit of practice you should be able to get down pretty well and by all accounts I've had three shulkers worth of practice in this episode, so that should have gone slightly smoother for me than it did. But once we hop back through to the overworld, remember that the shulkers aren't going to be next to your bed where you respawn, and they're not even going to be at the world spawn point itself. They are going to be over at that zero zero coordinate where the very center of the world mathematically speaking is. So if we head over here, if we just take a quick flight past the end crystal over here to the swamp biome over here, we should find that there are now three shulkers in residence over here and one of them has now tucked itself behind that little bank of dirt. So we now have three shulkers out here in the swamp. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and those are going to be the foundation of when we eventually do the how did we get here advancement. I keep saying eventually because this thing does take a lot of preparation. I don't know exactly what episode I'm going to be getting the advancement or anything. So stay tuned on that score. But for today... I hope you enjoyed this little look at bringing shulkers over to the overworld. Now, there is one more reason you might want to do this, and it comes down to the fact that shulkers, while they are a hostile mob, 
they don't have the normal spawning rules that other mobs do. They do not despawn. And the reason for that, of course, is because there's no way of respawning them, and they contain such valuable loot in the form of shulker shells, which you use to make shulker boxes. So shulkers are kind of a unique mob in that way. There are actually a couple of others that do it, so they're not exactly unique. But shulkers can be used to create what is called a hostile mob switch, allowing you to fill your spawn chunks with mobs that do not despawn, basically preventing hostile mobs from spawning anywhere else in the world, which is perfect if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to deal with hostile mobs, but also wants the challenge of playing in survival. Effectively, it's like turning on peaceful mode for your world, but when you can turn it off anytime without using commands. And large-scale servers will do stuff like this as well. It's, it's a pretty advanced thing to do, and it's definitely not something that everybody will want to do, but I find it kind of interesting enough to mention here simply because one of the more popular methods of doing that involves bringing a ton of shulkers back to the overworld. But we're not going to do that because personally I like hostile mobs spawning around the place. It gives a bit of a challenge and it means my farms still work and everything. So we're not going to worry too much about that. But that has been an introduction to bringing shulkers back to the overworld. While it looks like they've despawned, don't worry, that's just entity render distance. And I think we're probably going to sign off the episode here being levitated into the air by my brand new set of overworld shulkers. So thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.